Littleton, Colorado for game two of the Centennial Invitational Women's Australian Rules Football Tournament. It's the home side, the Centennial Tigers, they're hosting the Orange County Giants all-comers team. So Orange County with a few players from different teams across the league, as well as a few top-up players from the Centennial Tigers as well. The Giants in the bright orange for the first time in US AFL women's history. So a very easy jumper to spot the Giants as the umpire blows his whistle to start play here at Harlow Park. So up goes the ball. The tap out there coming from Christina Cassos. She gets the ball down. It's the Orange County Giants kicking to the left end of your screen or the northern end of the ground here. And there'll be a stoppage very early on and a free kick paid to the Centennial Tigers. So I'll aim to go forward and a beautiful long kick there. Gains plenty of distance and a good looking kick hit here. But can the Centennial Tigers make anything of it? It's picked up by the Giants and a scrubbing kick goes away into the hands of Blavitt. She can't hold on to it though, so she'll need some help from her teammate. Blavitt goes back there though for the tackle as the ball spills forward. She remains in amongst it, but she gets some help from her teammate. The ball still remaining in dispute. Was that in the back? Nope. The umpire says play on. The ball pulled into a slight pack until it's pulled back out. And the Centennial Tigers can kick towards the southern end of the field. So again, another beautiful show of skills there from the Centennial Tigers. But to no avail as it just gets mopped up there by the Giants. So they'll try and go forward again here until the umpire comes in to pay a free kick. And that free kick will be going the way of the Giants. So it's the Giants here who just send a kick forward. As the ball goes forward as they look for a win here, it's the Centennial Tournament with four sides in this tournament. The Tigers with two teams. They've got a first and a reserves here, as well as the DC Eagles, and of course the Giants playing in today's match. So again, the Tigers go forward. A kick high is taken there by Ku. So Ku able to see that ball cleanly, take it and pop it on the right boot. She can get some distance with it. It goes to the left. She can't find a teammate to mark it as the ball goes close to the boundary line. Picking it up there was Tag Weber for Centennial Tigers, who goes on a bit of a run, and she can find her teammate in Lansing. So Lansing can take the mark and sends a kick on her right boot as well. She had a teammate there who wasn't able to get her hands on it. Some strong defense there coming from the Giants. Plenty of pressure, but the umpire again will blow his whistle, and he'll direct a free kick in the way of the Giants. So the Giants will gain a free kick here, deep in their defensive end. They'll look for a clearing kick to try and get it as far away from this danger zone as possible. And it is a long kick. It gets a bit of height on it. It might be a little bit too much height as it falls into Mises' hands. And the Centennial Tigers are on here. What could Moya do? Ah, sorry, Edwards Rona, rather. She can kick it forward. But again, the Giants just able to stand at the back of that line there and hold up to stop any score here. We're two, nearly three minutes gone in this first half of the match. But no, neither side is yet to score as the Tigers go again. The ball streams forward and it will be a mark. So the Centennial Tigers with a mark directly in front of goals, 20 meters out. They have a chance at scoring for the first time today. It's the first real scoring opportunity that we have seen across the match. And the ball goes up and it looks good. Will it make the distance? Yes, it does. The arms of the players go up and the umpire waves the two flags. So Centennial Tigers, nearly four minutes into this first half, one goal straight, they're leading the Orange County Giants. So it's the home side here, just getting that early advantage. Obviously they've got a lot of depth in their side, being able to field two teams. Again, it is their home tournament, so they do have a little bit of an advantage there, while also sending across four top-up players to the Giants uh, to ensure this game can continue to go ahead. So they'll be happy with that to be able to take the early lead as play restarts. Could be the Tigers able to go again here. The pack just stays into the center circle for a while. Although running into it there was Mora. Mora can get it and she can get it out. Stick, still sticking in the middle. As neither side able just to get that ball away. The kicks just going five to 10 meters although the umpire will come in there and make a decision that will send the ball to the Giants' way. So the Giants benefiting from a few free kicks early in this match, but still unable to hit the scoreboard. So the kick 
goes long and gets some distance, but it goes high as well. So the Centennial Tigers are able to grab it and go on a run. Beautiful looking kick there going forward. It's nearly entering the Centennial Tigers forward half. Will the play stop there by the umpire? Will Payne in the back? Into the hands of Oglesby. So Oglesby's got some teammates calling for her attention. And she goes long with the ball and she can pop it up to the hot spot here. Can her teammate mark it? Not quite to the ball going to dispute and it's either team's uh, ball here. It's the Giants who can just get it away and gain some distance for that one just to get it away from their danger zone. And it'll go out of bounds on the outer side of the ground. Still close to Centennial Tigers goals, so giving them an opportunity. But just far enough away that it gives the Orange County Giants a little bit of time to breathe. So the umpire will reset and throw the ball in for the match as we're nearing the six minute mark of this first half. The ball goes in and it'll come to ground, but it stacks on until streaming out of there are the Giants and the Giants can get away here. How far can they get with this? They might be able to catch their opposition on the counter attack, but the ball while gaining that distance will teeter over the line for another ball up. Ah, uh, no. Rather, it'll be a free kick. Very close to the line on the outer side of the ground, it'll be the Centennial Tigers free kick. So the ball can go forward, but it's just ably marked there by the Giants. And now we've got a chance here. She might go on a run. What can she do? The ball goes forward in space is her teammate who can just turn around, grab, put it on the boot and push it forward. She'll be looking for her teammates now to run on and see what they can do with it. Hotter's amongst it for Centennial Tigers, and she'll see it over the line. So Centennial Tigers stave off a bit of a charge there from the Giants, but the Giants deep in their zone, very able to get a goal here from this stoppage. So the Giants looking to get the win over the Centennial Tigers on their home turf as the ball comes in. Running after it there was Moya for the Tigers. But the Giants can gain control here. Smothering ball means it won't go any further towards the Giants' goals. Instead, it'll teeter about 30 metres away from home for the team in orange. The ball again, just remaining in a bit of a stoppage on the outer side of the ground. The ball being locked in that outer side of the ground uh, throughout the last few minutes of play. As it comes back in and again, just another stoppage. Some ferocious tackling here by the defense of the Tigers. Just meaning that Orange County flow can't go any further. Brilliant defense, really. Looking almost like a rugby scrum, just stopping them from advancing. advancing. But it's doing the job so far. As the side just looks to push their way forward and see what they can do. Is it holding the ball? It is. So Hotter being penalized there. And her opposition in Parsons will have a chance here. So it was hard work there for the Giants, but Hotter has got a chance. Uh, Parsons, rather, sorry, with Hotter on the mark. So Parsons, her kick might fall short. No, it goes through. You can see by her celebration. The ball through, and it's all even pegs, pegging here. One goal apiece. A fantastic opening Half of the game so far, it was a lot of centennial early on in that term, but geez, the Giants kept strong in defense and that's what's allowed them to not give up any more than that one goal and then come forward here and push through another strong defense from the Tigers to get that goal. So Parsons there with the goal. She's one of the old comers. She's from the North Texas Devils. So coming in there, and I'm sure Orange County are happy to have her in their forward line. All square in this game too. What can the Centennial Tigers do to respond? They're still looking for their first win as a club, yet to have a win in their first two games. So they'll be looking to respond quickly here as the ball comes down in the middle. And it could be the Giants able to attack here if they're able to get some clean handballs. Kathos can get rid of the ball, and that's... Doesn't go quite to her side's advantage. Getting the kick away there was Lucero, but she got it straight into her opponent's face. So it'll be another free kick for the Giants. So the Giants with another free kick in the middle. The ball goes out wide. It's a nice little kick 
if a teammate can be found, but getting to the ball there first was Edwards Rona. So Edwards Rona might be able to slow things down for the Tigers. She's got a good kick on her and she sends the ball forward. She's got some teammates there who can run onto it. And going for a run here is 20 at Clark. She goes for a run, her kick isn't the best looking, but it might do the job anyway. A kick towards Goldwoods. In amongst it is Lansing there who might be able to grab it for her side. And it'll just bobble through for a behind. So just that one point margin there to the Centennial Tigers pushing through that point there, manufacturing a score. So 117, it's the home side, leading the Orange County Giants one goal straight. They're off on a run now. What can the Giants manufacture straight from their back line? Well, they can manufacture a mark, but it'll be the pause in this first half. At the drinks break, it's the home side leading by just the one point. It really does show the evenness of this game so far where it's anyone's game. Can the Centennial Tigers go on here and really make a mark and win the first match for their club? Or can the Giants all comers just make their mark soon and start seeing what they can do and push away with this match? Obviously, we've seen plenty of skills coming from the Giants as well. Very strong defensively. They just need to really see if they can capitalize that and get the ball to spend more time in their forward half. We've seen the Tigers really good at locking the ball in their forward half and this is exactly what they do as they go forward again the ball will be teetering with the boundary line on the outer side of the ground until it does fall over the line so we've seen the ball really locked in that outer side of the ground throughout this first half so it'll be a boundary throw in here to see what both sides can do and 20 o'clock will take control of that boundary throw in beautiful looking throw there and a beautiful tap out from Kasos. They're really smart to go behind her head and this could spark something for the Giants. Quick handball across and a quick kick forward. They're getting on a little bit of a run here. That run ably stopped by the Centennial Tigers. So a sensational kick forward. They're getting plenty of distance there for the Tigers. We've seen some great skills from that team, the home side, so early on in this match with the two sides obviously in this competition. They've got plenty of skills they can draw on and those skills will need to be at the forefront now as they've got another chance here to put their second goal on the board and create a seven point buffer against their opposition today. The kick goes long and it could make the distance but it'll just bobble through for a behind. So it adds to the margin but it's just a minus score there for the home side, one, two, eight. They're leading the Giants one straight six. So, Game two here, the four team competition. Beautiful field to be playing on and a beautiful day for footy as well. So the Giants will clear it out and they get some distance on that, but it's ably chopped off there by the Centennial Tigers. And just with a quick search to see which way was home, it's sent forward and it bounces and it bobbles and it bobbles into a pack, but it also goes out the back of the pack, a quick kick off the ground will yield a goal for the Centennial Tigers. Sensational thinking there just to kick straight off the ground, not bother picking it up. And it came off the boot very, very smoothly to get that goal there for the Centennial Tigers. They've been pushing and now they've got that major after the drinks break, 2-2-14. Two, two, They're leading the Giants one goal straight. So an impressive start after this drinks break there from the Centennial Tigers. So they've just played two games in their history. They've lost to the Denver Bulldogs and San Francisco Iron Maidens in their first two games. And obviously those two sides with a fair bit of silverware between them with just a measly 10 titles there that they were coming up against. But this match today against the Orange County Giants really looking like a chance here as they move ahead by eight points. So nearly 14 minutes gone. In this first half of the match here, we'll be moving there towards the northern end as the Giants look to progress. A good looking kick will send the ball forward. It'll go to the goal square. Clutching at the ball there was Mary Casey. She can hold on to it, but obviously not a mark because it's been touched, but it does enough for the Tigers to just push the ball forward. Muka waits to hear the umpire and see what they have to say, and she'll go back and deliver the ball. 
because it'll be a free kick for the Giants. So too far out to score, you'd think, but plenty of players jostling down in the hot spot for that ball just outside the goal square. So the ball goes up and it'll hit that hot spot perfectly, but it's up to one of these players in orange to see if they can get it. It's going towards the goals. It'll take a kick off the ground here. Nope. They'll pick it up, but not able to gather it. Koo was in there for the Giants, desperate on the ground, and the umpire will come in to throw the ball up. So the Giants with a real chance here. They'll have Brower in the ruck for them. And the tap out will go straight towards the boundary line, which though isn't a bad result for the Orange County Giants. Gives them a chance to set up and see what they can do. So in, the ball will be thrown in. And the umpire will call it back and he'll call another throw in. Wasn't happy with that one. <laughs> so they'll just take an extra second to reset. Got to get that boundary throwing right. It's a tough skill to master and the ball will go out the back and it's the Giants here with a chance here. The kick away from Romanoff goes forward and it's good. Romanoff with a great goal there for the Giants out of that stoppage. She showed some good reading of the play to get that goal and geez, it brings her side now within two points of their opposition. So two goals straight, the Giants. They're just trailing the Centennial Tigers 2-2-14. So some very good work there. So sterling work there from Kim Romanoff. Just brilliant game sense to pick that ball out of the back of the pack and send it straight towards goals. A good eye for goals there from the Centennial Tigers top up player who's just scored a goal against her usual mob. But you know the Giants will be happy to have her in orange rather than wearing the Tigers jumper. But it's the Centennial Tigers who push forward here. And it'll be 20 o'clock who can gather. And she puts it on her boot and she gets a little bit of distance there. And she can get it straight into the hands of Oglesby. Good pick up from Oglesby. And she's got her teammate and Elliot on. It's a bit of a foot race. Can Elliot beat her opponent? No, she can't. So Orange County Giants, even Sawyer with the ball. Can she shake this tackle? Nope. The umpire will have to come in there. Because Dykes just had her wrapped in a tackle too strong for her to get out of. And the umpire, in fact, has paid it a free kick towards Dyke. So that sensational tackle rewarded there. And Ali Dykes will have a chance to put on her first goal for today and put her side's third goal on for the match. She takes her lineup off just a couple of short steps, which means she can't quite make the distance and it'll be stopped by the wall that is the Giants. But Dykes will go back in there for a second effort. She's one against three, and she can get that hand pass across to Mooka. Mooka's then taken in a tackle by Mora. The ball bobbling around here. Oh, will be able to pick it up. She can get a kick away, but she can't get the score on the board that she was wanting. So just the behind there will mean 2-3-15 is what the Centennial Tigers move to as the Giants just stay at that two goals straight. But, geez, they're containing this margin, the Giants. And they're doing very well. Lots of top-up players here for the Orange County Giants, of course. So a bit of a uh, the all-comers team. They've got three players from the OC Giants, three from the Ohio Valley River Rats, three from the Denver Bulldogs, two from the Wasatch War Gals, and a player each from the North Texas Devils, Chicago Swans, San Francisco Iron Maidens, Arizona Hawks, and North Star Blue Ox. And of course, four top-ups coming from their opposition today in the Centennial Tigers. So... They're doing very well for a side that's trying to put something together with lots of teammates coming from different teams in this competition as Edwards Rona gets the kick there forward for the Centennial Tigers. It'll be brought to ground and again, another kick forward there. Won't be able to find the big sticks at the end. Will it be brought over the line? Yes, it was. 20 o'clock, make sure. Just that ball is knocked over the, uh, over the line. But it'll be a free kick potentially towards the Giants just for a bit of a, a knock note. It will stay as a boundary throw-in. So the ball will be thrown in. It's deep in the Tigers' attack. They've got a chance here to just build that margin up before the halftime break. It's not far away. Oglesby's got the same plan. And she converts. So Oglesby, quick out of that boundary throw-in. She's been prominent today. And now she's on the board. So 3-3-21 three, three, Oglesby goal. Oglesby's goal brings the home side to and they'll lead the Giants two straight 12. 
So that margin creeping up to nine points as we near the halfway mark of this game. The Giants will be looking just to claw one back here, you'd think, just to make sure that margin doesn't get away from them in at half time. But from the looks of the Tigers, their fans will be pretty excited that this could be the big win for them to take. Although obviously a fair bit of the match remaining. So coming in there to swipe in the ball is Jillian Weber. She can get a short little chip kick away. And her teammate's able to get a hand onto it. Pushes it forward in a smart move. Although it'll be the Giants able to pick this ball up. Good looking kick going forward. Trying to weave that ball back into the middle. And a crushing tackle there by Edwards Rona on her opponent in Evelyn Rabble. Will mean that Edwards Rona gets that free kick. So, a lot of determination shown there by Edwards Rona to help her side along. And they've got a chance here to score. There's still time. So, she'll push the ball forward. And it'll be Oglesby again. She can get another kick away as she's being tackled. She's looking there for her teammates. Tag Weber gets a hand on it. And that hand will get the ball to Twentya Clark. Twentya Clark sends the ball forward. Her teammate can't mark it, but she can pick it up cleanly. Ali Dyke's kick not straight, though. And it'll just be a minor score. So at half time, that score will bring it to 3 4 22. The home side leading the Giants 2 straight 12. My first game, I stood there and I was just like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm just going to run. I just kept going and I kept going to practice, I kept going to the games, and eventually it just clicked. And I was just like, oh, I get it now. Like, this is fun. Aussie rules is often known as footy, is the equivalent of like the NFL here. And so in Australia, they call it AFL. So in Australia, it's still a huge sport, especially for the women, it's getting even bigger. It's empowering for women, young women. It's really great to just be able to run around and just have so much fun with a bunch of people that love the same sport that you do. It just gives me this energy that I just can't describe and it just brings me like so much joy. <laughs> it's a great um, physical outlet, but also the people that we play with are just so amazing. These are the girls that if you want to dress up and go out, They'll be there for you if you want to be in your sweatpants all day and eat chocolate and watch Netflix. They're also there for you. I think that this sport has something for everyone. I just feel like anyone and everyone should try it, give it a go, and just see if they like it. If you're watching this video, it's not by accident. This is for you. We rejoin the action five minutes into the second half. So the Centennial Tigers wasting no time in this second half. They've moved to 4-5-29. They lead the Giants two goals straight. Haven't scored the away side in this second half so far. It's the second of two 20-minute halves. So still plenty of time left for the Giants to claw back something. They'll be kicking towards the southern end or the right-hand side of your screen and they could be manufacturing something here. Alexis Koo, she's looking for her teammate. And she's able to find her. She spots her teammate and a mark. And there'll be a chance here for the Giants to put on their first score of this second half and pull back the deficit that they're currently sitting on. So a lovely kick there from Alexis Coop, another Centennial Tigers top-up player, to give the Tigers, uh, sorry, to give the Giants rather this chance to score. It's not a major though. It's just a behind, but it's the first score for the Giants. For this second half, they'll move to two goals, one, 13. Still trailing their opposition. So Centennial Tigers, they'll look to go end to end of Harlow Park, their home turf here in Colorado. A bounce, bounce will send the ball high and it'll gain plenty of ground here. Another, and mark there too, just to top off that bit of play that got the ball quickly out of defense. So the outer side of the ground, we'll see another kick and a beautiful mark taken there by Muka. She was standing in the right position at the right time. She found herself some space. Her teammate spotted that and Muka taking a sensational grab there. 
to hold on the ball onto the ball and give her side some time to move forward reset it's also allowed a bit of congestion that means edwards rona couldn't get a free run to that ball it's the giants going forward here but they won't go forward much because oglesby can pick that one up and send a long kick along the ground but it'll just go straight into the hands of her opposition. Not able to pick it up though. So again, the Tigers here, Blavitz, she's got a chance here. She can get the ball off there and the ball will go forward and the players will celebrate the Centennial Tigers. Celebrating a well-earned goal there. It started in the back line, stopped in the middle for a little passage there. But aside from that, the ball was moved almost directly down to their goal. Never once going back into the Giants forward 50. So 5-5, five, five, 35. They'll take the lead against their opponent. 2-1, 13. This margin starting to grow now. And 22 points, geez, it's difficult to come back from. So Centennial Tigers now with two sides in this competition, which is sensational. They're still searching for that first win. So obviously having two sides, those helps with that as well. You've got plenty of teammates that they've been training with and practicing their skills and those skills have been on display too sensational game sense from the centennial tigers coupled with some really good kicking and that kicking has gained plenty of meters for them and allowed them to get close to home and they'll try and go again here and that ball clearing ball from moya she sends it forward and the players will chase after it moya's still in there she's able to gather it puts it on the right boot really quick thinking there from moya and she's able to find her teammate late Bump coming on her, but the ball will be wrapped up and the umpire will come in. So Carly Austin showing some real strength in that contest, but just not able to hold on to the mark. And the ball will stick around the Centennial Tigers forward arc though. So ball not moving anywhere and all players are just tangled up and the umpire again will make his way in to throw it up. Ball comes to ground, running in there were the Centennial Tigers. It was Tafoya who could get her hands on the ball, trying to do something for her side. It's tough going here, the ball moving at a very slow pace, but slowly the Centennial Tigers inching towards their goals if they can. Carly Austin again has her hands on the ball. But the stealth defense of the Giants again shines through. So it's not easy going for the Centennial Tigers despite the margin being in their way, going their way. Muka's got the ball, she can get it out. But it goes to her opposition. Tackle there being laid by Lansing. Lansing gets the tackle away, but the Giants will get the free kick. So the ball will go into the hands of Orange County, wearing their orange strip for the first time in USAFL women's action. Some options presenting. And the ball probably doesn't come off the boot as they would have liked. So instead, there's a chance here for the Centennial Eagles to go forward until the umpire comes in and says, that'll be the drinks break. Well, no better way to start off after the drinks break than with a goal as the Centennial Tigers just move that margin forward. It's now 35 that they're leading the Orange County Giants 13. And geez, you can sniff the first win in their history, can't you? They'll just try and see if they can keep putting on some goals here. Geez, they've had a lovely game so far. They've really showed some cohesiveness as a team and some supreme kicking skills. And they'll try and do that again. Bending down to pick that up was Muka. She couldn't pick it up cleanly and the Giants will come in here and see if they can move it away. They're able to push the ball forward towards the southern end of the ground. But a raging tackle there taken by Edwards Rona sees the ball spill out and just stops the flow of the Giants there, which means the Tigers can come in here and pinch the ball if they're able to push it forward. But the ball will remain in dispute and the umpire decides it wasn't really going anywhere. So he'll come in and throw up the ball very close to the boundary line on the outer side of the ground. The tap out goes down and goes straight into the hands of the Giants. Kick forward though, doesn't go far. It's gets tangled in amongst players, but the mark will be taken, which means the Giants can go forward here. 
And they push the ball forward. They've got a chance here. There's some free plays if they can run onto it. No, the ball will just go straight through for a behind. So none of those Giants players able to get it before it rolled through there. But that brings their score to 2 2 14 as they trail the home side 5 5 35. So a long kick there giving them that minor score. But it won't do enough to bring back this deficit that they're facing. So the ball moving into the middle of the ground, outer side of the ground, getting hand to it was Yoon. She couldn't pick it up though, and the ball will spill to the ground. Again, it's Wills who can gather, but the ball remains in dispute. Neither side able to gain full possession of that ball as the free kick goes the way of the Centennial Tigers. So the Centennial Tigers pushing towards the northern end of the ground. They will take that mark and see if they can use their composed nature there to push forward. Up there, it was Muka again. She was in and about the pack. There's Edwards Rona in there as well. Running onto the ball, there is another teammate in loose rope. Player starting to crowd the ball, but loose rope can get there quicker. Can she gather the ball brought to ground there? So she'll have tough going if she's to prize it out and she can't. So outside the pack there as well it was Moya. So the umpire will throw it in and see which side can gain some ground from this throwing the ball on the ground. Tigers try and do their best to push it forward but they can't. Again it'll be locked up here and the umpire may be forced to intervene and he is. So we'll have another ball up just on the outside of the center square here as the tap out goes and it has to be seen who can get their hands on this? Some beautiful tackling pressure there coming from Aileen Yoon of Orange County Giants. You can't fault the Giants' pressure throughout this match. And they've tried to stall the Tigers as much as they could during this game. So it's the Giants here who are just keeping the ball around the same area of the ground, just outside that centre square for as long as they can. The Tigers pushing the way forward in any way they can. And again, the umpire just forced to throw the ball up in a stoppage on the arc as the ball goes up. Play is wrapped up, and again, the umpire will come in there though, and he'll pay a free kick. So we'll make sure there's a free kick here to break this up, and you'll see the players start to flood forward here. Players in free space calling for the ball there is Muka. Muka's got some plenty of space, but the ball doesn't get anywhere near as far as her because it's intercepted. But they could have another chance here, the Tigers, to just push the ball forward. It's very close to the boundary line, a little too close because it'll go over the boundary line. And these will go and gather that so that the ball can be thrown in. So it'll be Kasos rucking for the Giants again. She's done a good job today. And she'll go up again. The ball will go over her head though, so she doesn't have a chance to tap it out. At the bottom of that pack there were a few players just jumping on it. And that stoppage again comes to the fore as the umpire is forced to pull this in. So Repeat stoppages in the last few minutes. Just showing players obviously getting a little tired as well as we near the end of this match. It's been a tough match to contest and it's been a tight match to contest with the Centennial Tigers really just gaining a hold in it in this second half. So Edwards Rona, she can get a kick away and she pushes it forward and goes for distance. But again, just a bit close to that boundary line. So the Centennial Tigers able to lock it in though. So they'll be happy that they're locking it in to their forward arc and their attacking zone. And they'll see what they can make up out of this. As Kasos goes up against Meese in the ruck. Meese with the tap out, it falls to ground. Little scrubbing kick away. We'll just pull it out of a bit of danger zone for the Giants and they can push ahead here. But the ball will come back the same way it came. It'll sit at the top of the arc until it's pulled out and can be pushed forward here. This could be a chance for the Tigers just to gain another goal as we near the end of this match. It's wrapped up and the umpire will come in and break it up. So the defensive pressure, just stopping the Tigers from getting an easy win here, but they will win the free kick. So it's Tag Weber. She can make the distance 20 metres out. She looks comfortable. 
She runs in and she pops it up. And you can see the cheers from her teammates. They know what's coming and they know they're going to win for the first time in the club's history. So the Giants all come as well. They've played well today, obviously with a side made up of teams from around the competition, but just haven't got the scoring opportunities that they would have liked while staying strong in defence. But all credit to the Tigers who, despite that pressure in defence, have been able to push forward and get these scores on the board and just pull out that margin to 27 points. So just three minutes left in this match. It's the Tigers that are home and hosed on their home turf. And they'll see if they can just gather another goal to ice the cake of their first win in this competition. As the umpire restarts play, it's Moyar at the bottom getting the ball away. A crafty kick there from the Giants will send the ball their way instead. But it'll be Edwards Rona who's been good today and she pushes the ball forward. She tries to gain as much distance as she can. She gets it straight into the Tigers forward 50. But the ball will just be locked in there and won't be able to do too much with it. Plenty of players surrounding it. Mees is in there for the home side. And it'll be Elliot with a kick. But she just hits the post though. So we'll have a boundary throw in from Elliot. Uh, just wasn't quite online there. So the Tigers though have locked it in. And they've got a chance to see if they can push forward for another score for today. Muka with her hand up to take the ruck for the home side. Well, it's Brower for the Giants. A kick away there from Lucero. She puts it forward and she gets the goal. Does she? No. The Giants players put up their hand to say it was touched. And it'll just be the behind there. So 6-6-42 six, six, now. They'll be leading the Giants 2-2-14. Two, two, so a quick behind there coming from the home side. So it's a good day for the club getting their first win and they'll get it at Harlow Park on their own home turf. So the Giants will push away to the outer side of the ground. It was a nice clearing kick there and it finds the boundary, but it was just out of bounds on the full. So unlucky there. It'll mean Ashley Wills with a chance for the Centennial Tigers and with the ball. So she'll just see if she can push it forward now here. Just a minute remaining in this match. And the ball will again just lock in that Centennial Tigers forward 50. So the high ball will go up there. It goes to the outer side of the ground, but an intercept mark there taken by the Giants. So it'll be the Centennial Tigers here at Harlow Park. They'll take a strong, dominant win today with some sensational players across the field. Evie Oglesby was important. Amanda Newell in the ruck. Ali Dykes we've seen with her pace and sensational kicking, as well as Carly Austin. Raquel Lucero important in the second half. So some great skill on show from both of these teams here today. But the Centennial Tigers will come out the victors for the first time in the club's history. So a big day and they get to do it at home. So that will be it for the match. And it's the Centennial Tigers taking a comprehensive win there against the Orange County Giants. 42 to 14, a big win and a big day for the club.